Good morning and welcome back. It's another great day. The sun is shining, the ducks are flying high, and I've just found some more packets of Earl Grey. So awesome. And some out of date cappuccinos. So let's get this party rolling. And we are in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And listen to this at verse 14. And if anyone does not obey our word in the, this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. You know, in the context here of chapter 3, verses 6 to 15, Paul is addressing the sin of idleness, or if you like, laziness. You know, in Thessalonians, there were those who were giving up their work, they were giving up their responsibility, excuse me, they were giving up their responsibilities, they were giving up their duties, they were abandoning their livelihoods and their routines because they thought Jesus was like coming back tomorrow. They literally, you know, were just sitting around, um, not working, thinking, oh, I don't have to worry about that bill, Jesus is coming back. Um, and, you know, so they're just sitting around doing nothing, probably just eating everybody else's food. And in verse 6, you know, it refers to the disorderly brother. Now, the disorderly brother of verse 6 in the Greek can refer to playing truant. So the Thessalonians, in their excited idleness, were truant from the duty and from their work. So Paul is trying to bring these over-enthusiastic Thessalonians in line, trying to get them back to take responsibility, to go back to work, to be able to pay their bills, to feed their families. You know, if you don't keep company with them, you're not going to become like them, you know. If you're going to keep on hanging out with these people, their enthusiasm is, is going to affect your thinking. Jesus is coming back tomorrow. I may as well give up work. Don't have to study for that exam. Um, that was the scenario that was going on. And so Paul's saying, look, don't keep company with them. They're going to, they're, so they're going to end up getting hungry then they're going to go back to, to work. And when you look at Paul, Paul was a rabbi. And the rabbis there in the first century, I believe, would, didn't take payment for, for teaching the scriptures. So the rabbi had to have a trade, and Paul was a tent maker. And Paul, he supported himself to do, his, uh, to do the missionary journeys that he was called to do. Paul was not lazy. He worked hard. He funded himself. Now, the lazy brothers at Thessalonica would become a burden. And Paul's whole aim there in verses uh, was it 14 to 15, his aim is to restore them. You know, do not count them as an enemy. These aren't enemies they're not bad people um, they are brothers but admonish them he, he wants them restored he, he wants them to be warned you know they're not living the disciplined life in a correct way and A.W. Tozer he, he, he said the most enthusiastic Christian is most easily led astray and I think we see a classic case of that here in Thessalonians, Thessalonica. They're so enthusiastic that they're, they're, they're led away with their own excitement that Jesus is coming back. So let us seek to be balanced in our approach to the return of the Lord Jesus. Let us be balanced in our approach to Scripture and balanced in our approach to family and to work and in every area. May we ask the Lord to search our lives so that we may 
have balance and go in the right direction to be a right example for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lessons we can learn from the epistles of Paul. And we pray, Lord, that we do work hard and we do have a balance, Lord, in our work schedules, Lord, that we also have time for family and for friends. Lord, we pray that you create enough employment in this area, Lord, of South Wales, and, and wherever there's unemployment, may jobs come along. Lord, may we have the right spiritual balance in every area of our Christian walk. May we have um, self-control in our discipline, uh, disciplines of Christianity. Lord, you are a mighty God, and we worship you and we bless you this day for your great and your mighty provisions. Amen. So may the Lord continue with you and give us all the desperately needed spiritual balance and, and the enthusiasm in the right measure. May God bless and keep you safe this day.